I am Joan Eagle Goldstein. Our mother, Margaret Dinsmore Morse Eagle, started the new year with the negative news of a positive test for COVID-19. She cared for herself for two weeks while we, her children, stayed in close contact via Portal TV. I had the privilege of being able to be with her once she was considered no longer contagious, the last eight days of her life. Even as she became more and more ill, she kept up her habit of a friendly smile and, and hello for everybody that came into her presence. That was a bit deceptive for the doctors and others. Her speech left her on the second to last day and her smile that day was only half. She passed away in her apartment at Hunter's Point in Helena, Montana on January 20th, 2021, at the age of 100. I celebrate the presence of Nurse Marie and the hospice team who helped care for her in her final days. I am Susan Eagle Reynolds, Margaret's oldest daughter. Anyone who visited mother over the last few years no, she loved to talk about her life. She was born in Anaconda, Montana in 1920 to Charles Woodman and Alice Cornelius Morse. After graduating from high school in 1938, she attended Colorado Women's College, attracted by their music and equestrian programs. After being told by her riding instructor that she just wasn't built to jump horses, she decided she would transfer to Montana State College the following year. She graduated in 1942 with a degree in home economics and a minor in music. She would have preferred to have a degree in science, but in 1942, that was not an option for women. One night when mother was in her junior year of college, she had felt compelled to go to the state basketball championships being held on campus, even though she was not that interested in basketball. She found a seat next to a man studying as he watched the games. That was Harold Eagle. They chatted and soon began dating. Mother's favorite story was the next summer Harold tried to call her in Anaconda and asked to speak to Margaret. He was told, I'm sorry, but she just left on her honeymoon. Fortunately, mother had mentioned that there was another Margaret Morse in Anaconda. During the winter of mother's senior year, she and Harold took ski lessons together. After a Valentine ski party, at Bear Canyon Ski Lodge, Harold proposed to her. So it was only appropriate that skiing would become an important activity in their life together. Summer after Margaret graduated from college, Harold's mother got her a job at a fishing camp on the Madison River near West Yellowstone where Harold was working at the family business. Past President Herbert Hoover was a guest at the fishing camp on his birthday and mother carried in a lighted cake singing happy birthday. The other guest teased, Margaret, aren't you going to kiss the president? She emphatically replied no and was teased again that all her kisses were saved for Harold. Later that summer, Harold drove Margaret to the Firehole Falls in Yellowstone National Park and presented her with her engagement ring. Dad had one more year of college, so mother taught high school in Sheridan, Monto Montana while he finished school. Dad received a degree in engineering from Montana State College in 1943. World War I was on and he was one of the graduates who headed to Seattle to work for Pan American Airways. Because Pan American was flying for the Navy, 
engineers were given second class commissions. Harold lived with his mother's sister, Helen, and gave Margaret the option of being married in Seattle in November or waiting until the next summer to be married in Anaconda. Margaret chose Seattle. They were married in Aunt Helen's living room in November of 1943. They honeymooned in Victoria on Vancouver Island where they stayed in the Empress Hotel. From here on, the course of mother's life was shaped by dad's employment. Early in the summer of 1944, Pan American transferred Harold to San Francisco. He did not like the x-ray inspection of planes he was being asked to do, so he took his commission and entered the Navy. He shipped out on July 2nd, 1944 for Hawaii, arriving shortly before the Japanese surrender on August 14th. He remained in Hawaii doing engineering work while mother continued to work at the San Francisco airport for the employment department working on their Cardex files. When dad was discharged from the Navy in the early summer of 1945, they flew to West Yellowstone and worked at Eagle Store for the summer. When mother felt poorly enough that she consulted a doctor, he asked, are you trying to work as hard as the Eagles? And suggested she slow down. In the fall, mother and dad took a trip east to visit her parents who had retired to Dover, New Hampshire, and to visit Eagle relatives in New York and Pennsylvania before they moved to California to take a job dad had been promised. However, when they got to California, there was a recession and the firm was unable to hire dad. He became very discouraged as he looked for work, finally taking a job at Bethlehem Steel to work on towers. In hindsight, he said that he found the Bethlehem Steel job more challenging than he expected. In April of 1947, I was born. On the same day, Dad received a job offer from Morrison Merrily Consulting Engineers in Helena, Montana. I'm not sure which event made him and Mother happier, but both had major impacts on their lives. Following the doctor's advice, Mother and Dad waited until I was two months old before heading to Montana and the job at Morrison Merrily. In 1948, mother became pregnant again. When Charles was born, he lived only four hours. An autopsy showed he had no diaphragm muscle to separate the abdominal cavity from the lung cavity. Mother was sad that she and dad never saw him, though doctors suggested waiting two years before trying to have another child. During that time, Dad decided to get a master's in earthquake design from the University of California in Berkeley. Mother worked at a bank posting to checking accounts using a posting machine. I was in daycare where I was bullied by a blonde girl who loved to yank on my braids. One day, Dad came home and asked why I had lost my sparkle. He and Mother then decided that Mother should quit her job to take care of me. Mother and dad returned to Helena and Morrison Merrily during the summers and at the completion of his degree. In 1950, my parents were again expecting and my privileged position as an only child was about to end. I, Joan, was born December 11, 1950. The next month, we moved into the house where our parents lived for 50 years. When Joni was born, Dad took one look at her and forgave her for being a girl. But when I, Alan Eagle, was born on June 5th, 1953, Dad drove through the neighborhood honking his horn, proclaiming that he finally had a son. Being the first son was a dubious honor because Dad told me 
that he spanked me the most because I was the oldest son and he expected more out of me. Well, with our growing family, our two bedroom house more than doubled in size to make room for the growing family. Hi, my name is David Eagle. I'm the youngest son of Margaret and Harold Eagle. After my dad had a nervous breakdown, he was hospitalized in Spokane, Washington, which happens to be where I currently live. While he was there, I was born in Helena in 1954. My mom decided not to name me until my dad returned to Helena after his hospitalization. In the meantime, my mom would write letters to my dad referring to me as Skipper. Dad thought my mom was referring to a dog she got in his absence, even though my dad himself never wanted a dog, nor did we ever get a dog. My mom did on a few occasions go to Spokane to visit my dad. In her absence, my dad's sister, our Aunt Betty, cared for us four children. It was during that dark time that mother had one of the most important experiences of her life. Here is mom's account in her own words. One day I needed to go to a meeting. I got a babysitter. When I got home, I took the sitter home, came back, hung my coat in the closet, and started across the living room. Suddenly, it was as if I'd stepped over a chalk line and a voice spoke up saying, Oh, you woman of little faith, this is not to be. I suddenly felt I should get into a more prayerful time. Just because I went to church regularly didn't mean I was a practicing believer. Yes, I did believe in God and felt he had been active in my life, but I didn't think about him very much. No, I had not been praying or even thinking about God all those months. Those words said were definitely not ones in my thinking. I felt that the Holy Spirit had spoken to me and that I'd better begin thinking in a positive way. Dad came home from the hospital after four months and sat around at home for a couple months until his memory came back. After six months away, he went back to work full-time at Morrison Merrily, and he was able, with medication, to excel as an engineer and a leader at Morrison Merrily. He became first vice president and general manager of the firm and later chairman of the board. God had brought mom and dad through one of the most difficult times of their lives together. As my sister Susan said earlier, many of our parents' early dates were skiing. When they had a family, skiing continued to have a central place in their lives and in our lives. Our parents built an A-frame cabin at the base of Bridge of Bowl Ski Area, which is just outside of Bozeman. We called this cabin Eagle Sitzmark. We then spent most of our weekends during the winter at that cabin. We also spent many weekends during the summer and fall working on that cabin. It was there that we all learned to work. We were constantly building, cutting firewood, and hauling in supplies. When my dad thought my brother and I were too young to help with some surveying, he instead asked my older sisters to help. My mom, on the other hand, taught Alan and me to help with the kitchen chores. Thus, my parents were both early feminists, although they themselves would not have thought about themselves that way. One day during the summer, I walked through the woods near the cabin and found huckleberries. Soon pick, picking huckleberries became a summer pastime at the cabin for everyone except my dad, because my dad was always so busy making improvements to the cabin. However, dad loved to eat huckleberries with his homemade ice cream. Later, the ski hill lowered its base a mile further down the mountain. As a result, we would drive from Helena to the ski hill on Friday night and climb up the mountain. Often, it was under bright starlit skies. Soon, my parents bought a couple of snowmobiles to help transport luggage 
and also start, uh, and also uh, sometimes people to the cabin. One of the joys of our parents' life together was hosting hundreds of people as guests to Eagle Sitzmark. Not only do we have amazing memories of the cabin, but our children do as well. Our mom skied until she was almost 80 years old. For me, mom was an amazing mother, and I do not remember any times of major conflict with her through my entire life. When I was a teenager, there was one habit she had that I did find annoying, and that's that she could talk to anyone, and she would talk to anyone. And she would just meet total strangers and immediately strike up a conversation. And as a reserved teenager, I found that a little difficult to handle. I was proud of my mom though. Dad didn't make many of my athletic competitions, but mom did. And she would say after my football games, I think you are the muddiest player out there. And during my wrestling matches, I would have hated to sit by her because she wrestled the whole match right with me. Another passion for my mother was her family heritage. And she loved to trace back the Morse family background and her mother's family, the Cornelius family background, and even her family background all the way to the Mayflower. There are six people who came over on the Mayflower that I'm descended from. Another amazing part of mom's life were the horses and mules. Our parents bought two Shetland mules for us kids to ride, but they were totally unrideable. So we used them for pack animals. Then our parents bought a huge gentle mare, Shamrock, who was boarded with other horses. Some of those other horses didn't get neutered quickly enough, so we ended up with two more surprise colts. The first one named Surprise, the second one Shillelagh, and we spent many years horse packing with those horses and mules. Mother also enjoyed being part of the Eagle family. My dad was one of 10 kids, and those 10 kids inherited a store in West Yellowstone that my grandfather started in 1908. And every year we have an Eagle family meeting and reunion and Every year for the last five years, mother said, this will be my last family meeting, but she'd show up for the next year until COVID-19 didn't allow us to do that this year. But she did show up via Zoom. Special years for mom and I were the ones in the 90s when I lived in Helena and we enjoyed a friendship beyond just being family. She introduced me to the weavers and spinners in, Hel in Helena, and so began a passion I still carry on. Mom was active in her church, home economics, Helena Weavers and Spinners Guild, and Pi Phi sorority. She enjoyed singing and gardening throughout her life. She was a charter member of Covenant United Methodist Church and sang with the choir into her late 90s. I quote her feeling about Covenant. This church is my family, and what fine members we have. She and Dad enjoyed over 50 years of marriage together. I also had the privilege of seeing my dad daily through the last month of his life. And then Mom lived another 25 years as a widow. Until the age of 95, Mom swam and worked out at the Broadwater Health Club. Her last few years were spent at Hunter's Point, where she was known as Smiley. She indeed had a cheerful personality to the very end of her life. Helena Mayor Wilmot Collins proclaimed May 11, 2020 as Margaret Morse Eagle Day in honor of her 100th birthday. He also sang one of her favorite songs to her, His Eye is on the Sparrow, as part of a socially distanced celebration outside Hunter's Point. In 2002, Mother sold the house that we had lived in for 51 years and moved to a beautiful condo on Saddle Drive, a three-bedroom condo that she enjoyed immensely. Mother always said that she prayed for me the most because she thought that I needed it the most. 
I guess her prayers were powerful. I went through a dramatic conversion to Christ at age 22 and ended up becoming a pastor. My mother was one of the most cheerful people who ever lived. When I was in high school, I would read in bed late into the night. Then at 6 a.m., mother would come down the stairs to my bedroom every morning singing, Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. And I survived that cheerfulness and went to high school and um, now appreciate how cheerful she was. Before concluding this reflection on our mom, I want to note some special thanks. In mom's later years, none of her children lived in Helena, and she did not want to leave Helena to live with one of us. We are so thankful that our cousin Richard Morse and his wife Carla settled in Helena during mom's later years and did so many things to help her out, and they included her on holidays when she was alone. I thank them so much. I also want to thank my sister Joan, who lived closest to mom, for all the ways that she helped mother, making regular trips to Helena, especially when she risked COVID-19 to care for mom the last week of her life. David, Susan, and I cannot thank her enough. I want to conclude my part in this quoting of mom's exact words. My life has been wonderful. Harold and I celebrated 52 years of marriage our four children have done well, and there have many, been many times I have felt God has sent his angels to step in at very specific times to take care of us. I believe there is a power beyond what we physically know, and I am trying to keep the faith. Mother, you kept the faith. And I trust that Jesus greeted you with these words after you left us in death. Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. My mom, Margaret Densmore Morse Eagle, was preceded in death by her parents, her husband Harold, their infant son Charles, her brother Charles Woodman Morse, and her sister Alice Morse. My mom is survived by her four children, Susan Eagle Reynolds of Wynwood, Pennsylvania, Joan Goldstein of Big Fork, Montana, Harold Allen Eagle of Roy, Washington, and David Eagle of Spokane, Washington. She also had 11 grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, and numerous other relatives who loved her on both the Eagle side and Moore side of my parents' families.